Yo, what's up, YouTube? I'm getting a lot of comments on my Mutilate videos asking about what spec I am playing. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys the Mutilate spec that I personally am using and I think is overall the best. I've tested out a few damage-wise, and this one has definitely outperformed all of them. First, I do want to note that you do do more damage with the 1.4 in main hand with Deadly Poison and then the 1.8 in the offhand. So it's similar to PvE. And what this does is it also allows for deadly poisons to stack up faster, which is super important for whenever you are maybe switching targets um, or if you're trying to get the five stack and venom out. So just wanted to highlight that, that we are using the 1.4 in the main hand and the 1.8 in the offhand. The only time it is worth it to run double 1.8 is if you guys have two sinister revenges. Uh, a lot of people don't know that all of the Nax Ramus daggers are actually not unique, so you can stack both of them. Uh, that is the only time you want to break off web death from the main hand. So with that out the way, let's jump into the spec. Uh, let's start off in the assassination tree. And first, we're going to max out Malice. This is going to increase our crit by 5%. Then we're going to max out Puncturing Runes. This is going to increase our damage from Mutilate by 15% on the crit chance. Next is Ruthlessness, which gives you your melee finishing moves a 60% chance to add a combo point to your target. This is great for when you want to end Venom and get a slice and dice off. A lot of times when you are playing Mutilate, you're going to be stacking up, for example, a slice and dice, and you get a combo point off, and then you can do a rupture or vice versa. So it's really, really good to have this because you're constantly trying to stack rupture, slice and dice, and pumping out end Venoms. Next, we have his Vigor, which is going to increase your energy. And then lethality. We're only going to go three out of five for the damage bonus. And the reason being is because we're going to put three into improved poisons. This is increasing the chance of deadly poison to your target by 12%. So this is super important because Envenom does more damage the more stacks of deadly poison that you have on your target. So next we go vile poison, which also increases the damage from your poisons in Envenom. And then also increases the chances of it not getting dispelled. So these are really, really important. This kind of keeps up the, the deadly poisons and make sure they don't just like fall off. Next, we're going to pick up cold blood and then fleet footed. This is going to increase our movement speed and then also decrease the impairing effects. The biggest crux to mutilate is that there isn't shadow step and you're kind of like you're not as mobile. You can be incredibly mobile if you play it right. Again, mutilate is played really, really different than uh, than shadow dance and subtility. So it's just a different play style that you have to kind of train your eye and play style to. And it's incredibly rewarding. And I have to say, I actually, I enjoy Mutilate a lot more than Sub at the moment. So Fleet Footed is really, really good. And again, it doesn't stack with your uh, movement speed. So make sure to get a different enchant on your boots. Yes, I know. I do not have my boots enchanted. I just got them. Um, but yeah, next, Cold Blood again. Uh, quick recovery. This is going to increase the healing on you by 20%. Uh, little fun fact, this also increases the healing done by your bandages. So your bandages are actually going to be doing more healing for yourself, which is really, really cool. And then if anything misses, it's going to reduce the cost. This is great because sometimes uh, your mutilates are going to get parried or something like that. And again, mutilate is going to be a very high, high number energy cost ability, but you're not really going to get punished if it misses. So this is really, really nice because it kind of keeps that fluidity where... Mutilate is a high, it's a high costing ability, but when you're playing the spec and you're in the midst of like battle in the moment, it doesn't feel like you're just waiting. Like it actually feels super responsive and you're constantly doing things, whether it's getting the slice dice up and then you mutilate and then you get a rupture and then the combo points there and then you mutilate again and then you get a crit. And then in like, next thing you know, you're five combo, combo pointing in Venom and then you get the energy back. It's, it's a really, really fast paced pumping uh, machine like you do feel like you're a warrior but you're not using a two-hand sword you're using two daggers and you're stabbing them it's it's sick man i really do enjoy it next is seal fate your critical strike from abilities add 100 percent chance to additional combo points so when you crit so this is insane again when you're mutilating like i just said you're gonna get a mutilate off and then your next thing you know you're gonna have five combo points it's like this is a must-have and then overkill is the next one this is actually super undermined and i'm learning something new right now and what's really cool with overkill is when I want to do goes in, in threes or twos, I actually use vanish to reset overkill. So when I open, I'll actually take note of the overkill buff and I'll use vanish if I want to commit to a go to like double stack it. So then I have 40 seconds of increased energy regeneration and it pumps. I mean, talk about like if you're going, if you're playing, uh, 
you know, priest, uh, priest rogue versus like priest mute rogue versus H pal, H pal warrior or H pal DK. This is something that like really allows you to just keep up the consistency and the damage and pressure. It's really, really cool. Next is a little bit of an option here, but I'm going to highlight both of them. So if you're going to be playing threes, dead end nerves, a hundred percent, without a doubt, no questions asked. This is really good because it's essentially resilience without actually having to socket resilience. And again, resilience is our number one stat. I do think it's honestly really, really good to just go ahead and change a lot of your gems from attack power into stacking resilience. I haven't done this yet because a lot of the times I'm playing with um, like rogue mage or I'm still like playing sub just because I'm playing with a lot of different people. But if you want to min max and you want to main mutilate rogue, I think the most important stat is resilience for us because people want to go us and the mutilate damage is already so forward front heavy and just consistent that you don't really need that extra attack power. Like the mutilate does the talking for you essentially. So if you're doing threes though, and healer DPS, 100% dead end nerfs. If you're not, if you are wanting to do double DPS, I would highly recommend to go find weakness. And this will allow you to be just a little bit more offensive. Okay. Next is Deadly Blue, uh, Deadly Brew, sorry. This allows you to have the Crippling Poison. So it's really, really cool about um, Mutilate is that you can have Deadly Poison, Wound Poison, and Crippling. So you have Deadly on the main hand, Wound on the off hand, which procs the Crippling Poison. So you have three, which is great because it's also three different dispels that healers have to now try to get off if they want to try and get an important buff off. So this is really cool. And another really interesting thing is with... Fan of Knives, it acts differently on Mutilate, and you can actually stack all three buffs on a target. So you can stack Crippling, you can stack Deadly, and you can stack Wound, and just pretty much give an entire team MS, which is like one ability. And uh, there's some like really, really cool moments in threes that you can use this for to be super optimal. It's a pretty interesting talent. So next we have Focus Attacks. Your melee strikes have 100% chance to give you uh, two energy. So what's great about this, right? Your crits are giving you energy. Your crits are giving you extra combo points. Right back to what I was saying, Mutilate doesn't feel like you're you're kind of like starving just because it's a, you know, 60 energy ability. You're getting so much benefit when you do that 60 and when it misses, you're not getting punished for it that the fluidity of the class feels really, really responsive and immersive. Next, we're getting the, the you know, the God tier. This is the Holy Grail ability, Mutilate. And this is where the spec kind of changes um, a lot of the specs don't actually go Master Poisoner, and I found that Master Poisoner, in my opinion, is the ultimate because this allows your end venoms not to consume your deadly poisons. And what makes this so important is if you don't go this, a lot of the times you're gonna end venom like a warrior, but then you're at the you're at the becking of you know the RNG on when the next deadly poison's up. So Master Poisoner, I think, is absolutely critical. And it allows you to have a, an incredibly fluid gameplay because whenever a, uh, whenever a deadly is on the target, it's going to stay on the target. And so whenever you're tunneling a person, whether it's in twos, BGs, or arena, uh, threes, they're going to have a continuous growth of deadly poison stacks. It's not going to get to five and then end venom. And then you're going to have to, you know, like, oh man, I got to get, I got to get the deadlies up. I got the shiv or something like that. Like you don't have to worry about that. For example, we were playing TSG last night. And I envenomed and then I mutilated and then I was able to cold blood envenom again to get a kill because the stacks don't wipe off. So this is super, super important to have Master Poisoner. And it's, it also increases your damage as well, just like the natural state. Because whenever you stack up to the combo points and you want to envenom, you're not getting it ripped off. So Master Poisoner, again, really wanted to highlight that. You want to grab that. Next is the dual wielding specialization. Just go four out of five. This increases your damage. The reason being is we'll talk about it in a moment in the subtlety tree because there isn't really anything else to go and this is a good damage buff. Next is the opportunity. This is a subtlety tree. Opportunity to increase the damage and mutilate. This is a really good thing to have. You want to have Master of Deception. I know that you're slow, um, but you want to at least have this so you're not constantly getting sapped. So you have to run this. And then Relentless Strikes, your finishing moves have a 20% chance to restore 25 energy. This is absolutely insane. This always, always procs literally all the time seriously and um 30 tricks you want to have it for the blind sap oh, oh super super important excuse me next we have serrated blades with the nine percent ignoring your uh target this is really really good and <laughs> really, really good 
And it also increases the damage dealt by your rupture by 30%. All right. <clears throat> Next is Elusiveness. This does the Blind Vanish Cloak. This is really, really good for us in, in any environment, whether it's twos, threes, fives, or even uh, BGs, World PvP, RIP. There's really not that much anymore. But if you are on Grob or those special servers, it's, again, a really great thing. And then this is actually super interesting that not a lot of people know. You don't want to go initiative. Rogues are always taught to go initiative to get the extra comma points for the cheap shot. But you don't need that. You actually don't get as much value because vanishes are very very particular with mutilate rogues and you don't need the combo points because mutilate gives already so many combo points so you actually go set up and you'll be surprised with how many combo points you actually naturally gain from things getting dodged especially when melee cleaves are on you or something and you want to use evasion this is a great way for you to stack up slice and dice stack up rupture or even just normally stack up and then just do one mutilate into a five combo point end venom so you don't run initiative you run setup and then you want to grab preparation and then two points and dirty deeds. The reason why you go four out of here is because it you want to go. It, it looks like you want to go deadliness, but you can't because you have to go in heightened senses. And then you only get two out of two deadliness. And it doesn't add up damage wise. You could argue you will lose DPS, but you could argue that you could drop this, get heightened senses to have a better stealth and to reduce to get hit by range by 4% and then an increase attack bar by 4%. That is on you. You could do that. Uh, however, the damage, if you want to maximize it, it is the flat percent or the flat 40% on your offhand. So that is the entire spec, guys. Now I want to jump into the glyphs that you want to be running. Uh, yes, Mimili, I don't have the third one. The third one can be the sprint running on the water, or it could be the safe fall for like out in the world. Um, I haven't bought any yet. I do apologize. But what you do want to have is distract. This is super important. If any sort of TSG is like beelining into you or something like that, you want to make sure that you can have the distract as far as you can. Also, if healers are trying to drink behind a uh, behind a pillar, you can just go ahead, quick distract. It is very undermined how far this actually reaches. Like five yards feels really, really far. And then Glyph of Vanish increases your movement speed by 30%. This is super important for either getting away or being able to vanish, connect, and get a cheap shot because you're going to gain that speed boost, right? And then here are the three glyphs. Uh, two of them are 100% non-negotiable. And then one is debatable on if you want to change it or not. Preparation is not up, for not up for discussion. You have to run this. You get double dismantle. You get double kick. It's super, super good for locking down healers. And if you want to disarm for appeal, but then you need one more disarm for a warrior's blade storm, this is a must have. And then the next is the glyph of mutilate which reduces the cost of mutilate by five energy over a span of, uh, of a whole match. You're going to be gaining a lot of energy over time just by the five being reduced. So this is a must must have. And then the third one is glyph of sprint. I personally think glyph of sprint is better. You can run vigor, which gives you 10 energy. So you'll be capped at 130. However, I find a lot of the times that the openers on the, comp the specific comp that at least I'm playing is so important that's that I need this sprint boost. Now you could argue, and the argument I think is that mutilate rogue, depending on if it's like LSP or spell cleaves, you're sitting by the pillar and you're hitting whatever you can. Because again, the crux of mutilate is that you don't necessarily have the movement in like a very hyper fixated controlled environment that you know 2022 arenas are, right? Everyone is a lot better than they were 20 years ago. Um, so Mutilate Rogue, you have to play it a little bit differently sometimes. And a lot of the times you are by the pillar and you're trying to hit anything that you can. Now, it is nice if you're able to tap off your energy and then you'll be able to get a little bit extra, you know, usage out of that dump. And depending on how many times you're resetting, you might be able to benefit maybe two, three times in a match with that extra 10 energy, which could be great. However, I I just think and feel, for example, if I'm going up against TSG or anything is beelining us, I need to sprint, go in, get the sap. And then that lets our team go on the offensive. And I'd much rather have the setup than maybe the extra damage on like a, a reset or if anyone's overextending, just that like little extra pump. Because again, like I said earlier, Mutilate does the talking for you. So I don't really think the, ener the 10 energy is super necessary. But again, you can definitely swap these out and you can feel for yourself which one you do like best. And I will also highlight too, there's one also side, uh, another side glyph that you can run, which is Cloak of Shadows which reduces the damage that you take 
by 40%. So it's kind of like a mini wall. I don't really necessarily run it because I feel like when I'm cloaking, I'm trying to get out and not offensively cloak, stay in or like reduce damage. Could be useful, but that's just another glyph that I wanted to throw in there that you can kind of just play and figure it out for yourself. Like what is your play style? Because again, I want to also highlight mutilate and any spec that you want to play you can play it you got to figure out what your style is put the time in the reps in find players that are open to you trying new things and playing the spec that you want to play and find the new ways to look at the game and find new ways to win the game i'm a sole believer that any spec can be pro any spec can perform high you just got to change the way you look at the game and find those kind of win conditions so I hope that helps, guys. That is going to be the Mutilate Guide. And uh, let me know down in the comments below what you guys would like to see next. And as always, guys, much love. I'm live on Twitch every single day, twitch.tv forward slash showback. Join the Discord. It's down in the comments below for any rogue questions. And again, guys, much love. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.